Welcome to a very special edition on VIP Visits. Back in March, I had as my guest Michael Lyons, Disney historian. At the time we recorded our conversation, we talked about the Walt Disney Summer Film Festival, a little-known entry in the annals of Disney film distribution. Since it really didn't fit with everything else we were talking about, I saved it for a special time. And that special time has come, because it's almost Labor Day. And the Walt Disney Summer Film Festival always ended for the five years that it ran right before Labor Day. Also, back in March, when that episode of VIP Visits ran, Michael was talking about his forthcoming book, Drawn to Greatness. Well, since then, his book has been published. Drawn to Greatness, Disney's Animation Renaissance. I urge everyone to get this book because one of the greatest things about it is that Michael has drawn extensively on interviews that he conducted personally with the artists who made the films of the Disney animation renaissance. Here's Michael Lyons talking about the Walt Disney Summer Film Festival. The Disney Summer Film Festival is something really interesting. Um, when I was, I grew up in Long Island, New York, and um, growing up, uh, from the summers of, I believe it was 74 through 78, theaters would actually, I guess, contract with Disney to show a different Disney double feature from the last week of June through Labor Day weekend, which in New York, actually in what they call the tri-state area, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, that is summer vacation. So we would get out of school the last week of June. We would go back right after Labor Day. And um, they, D Disney at the time, um, brought all of their movies out of the vault um, and paired them up in different uh, double features where one was live action, one was animated. So you can see here on the poster, one of them is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and Blackbeard's Ghost. I remember going to see that uh, that particular week because it was the first week of summer vacation. And that came around every single summer. And that was how I was very fortunate to see um, pretty much every Disney movie, both live action and animated, uh, that, uh, that was made up to that point. And as I grew up and I would tell people about the Disney Summer Film Festival, they would think I was absolutely insane. People would say, I've never heard of this. I don't know what you're talking about. Especially when I eventually moved from New York down here to Florida, no one had heard of it. And I was at a Disney collector's convention and uh, a gentleman had all these movie posters. And I, I would always ask, because I remembered the poster like that in the lobby of the Mayfair Movie Theater in Comac, New York, <laughs> with the whole schedule for the summer. Um, and you'd count down the whole schedule. And as you started getting to the end, you'd get depressed because you realize not only was the festival ending, but so was summer vacation. Um, but in any event, I asked this gentleman, I said, do you have something, the, a poster from the Disney Summer Film Festival? And he said, let me see. It sounds familiar. And he pulled that out. Oh. I felt like, you know, Indiana Jones unearthing, you know, an, uh, an archaeological find. And he had no idea what he had. He just he sold it to me for next to nothing. And I went home and just marveled at the fact that I found this. And then not long after that, um, a gentleman named Jerry Beck, who we both know, but very well known, uh, animation historian and author and well-respected animation historian and author, he wrote an article on it when this thing called the World Wide Web uh, was, uh, was was such a, such a big deal. I remember Googling uh, the Disney Summer Film Festival and Jerry wrote an, an entire article on it because Jerry grew up in New York as well and he remembered it and he provided some backdrop as to what it was and how it came about. And it came about because at that time in the 70s, Apparently, uh, the box office for Disney reissues of their classic films was not doing well up in the tri-state area of New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. Um, so to help with that, they initiated um, a retrospective of the movies at Lincoln Center in 1973. And that was such a big deal. That was the 50th anniversary of the company, I believe, in 73. And that was such a big deal that they decided to initiate the Disney Summer Film Festival, but just in that section of the of the country. And um, for me, that that was Disney. You know, uh, Walt Disney World opened when I was five. Disneyland might have been, you know, uh, you know, a world away, being all the way out in California. So going to see those movies for me was was like visiting 
uh, Walt Disney World uh, or, or visiting a Disney park uh, every summer. And um, I feel very fortunate to have had it when I did. I know today, today's generation uh, is very fortunate to have Disney Plus where it's at the push of a button and you can watch a, a film. But to be able to see those classic Disney films in a theater each and every summer um, is, uh, is just filled with wonderful memories. Yeah, that is a fantastic look back at that. And it is it is very, very unknown, even among a lot of Disney aficionados. Yeah. And whenever anybody finds finds out about it and then is has to be convinced that it's real. <laughs> Jerry's article is a is a big help for that. Everyone's very jealous that the relative few people in your area <laughs> got got to experience this what why didn't they do it for everybody well it's exactly what you said Dis and walt walt even referred to this in his lifetime new york was not a good market for the disney films and um now you know why would that would necessarily be among you know outside of manhattan let's say i do not know but sure enough, some films never even played there. I think some reissues never even opened in New York. So you're right. The, this was a very smart move on the Disney company to, you know, offer these films that a lot of people in your area had never seen and also also to bolster it. Yeah. So I know I was, I was very jealous because I, I, too, am from New York, but... Upstate New York, quite a different, a whole different world, right. <laughs> even from Long Island. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we we got the we always got the New York Times every Sunday. So every Sunday, when I would look at this, open it up in the summer and look at, it, I would go, "What?" <laughs> so that didn't play up up in uh, where you were from, Jim, in upstate New York. No, upstate New York can mean many things to, to a lot of people. You say upstate New York, they, they think right above New York city. Yeah. We, we were up quite a bit North. Oh, so, gotcha. so we yeah. were quite a, quite a, quite a stone's throw from yeah. New York city, yeah. but I, we were, um, we were not far, as far North as Buffalo, but we were on the Pennsylvania border and we, we were near Syracuse. Syracuse was the next big city, but we were out in the country. We had all the traditional um, small town slash rural things, including movie theaters, not in our small town, but in, across the river, that would show Walt Disney movies. <laughs> so we didn't get the Summer Film Festival, but they showed every every brand new Disney movie, every reissue. So that's why that's why you were getting that film yeah. festival and we didn't. If they were judging the box office uh, off of me and my cousins and my family, we definitely kept Disney uh, going during those summers for sure. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You you were you were going to see Treasure of Matacumbe, whether it was in the Summer Film Festival or not. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite double features, I will say. And um, every once in a while, I will be honest, I, I recreate this because it reminds me of summer and it's just so Disney, was The Jungle Book and Swiss Family Robinson. If two movies were not better themed together it was it was those those two so um well you know my favorite scene from swiss family robinson has got to be when james MacArthur battles ka in the swamp that you know <laughs> talk about a crossover shared universe <laughs> that's right and when moochie makes friends with the baby elephant known as goliath too who he was even the boy oh now wait a minute I'm getting it all mixed up. Room shared universe, right? There. That wasn't even the Jungle Book. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. That I mean, some it's great fun to look back and see what what the various pair ups were. I mean, yeah. Bambi, Bambi, and Follow Me, boys. You know it. I know. Yeah, J Jerry in that article, and if anyone searches it out, they would give you a flyer, or they would have them available at the theater that would have that entire schedule on it so jerry i think held on i think the ones in his article uh he held on to those i think they're his from you know when he went to the theater so if you have a chance to check it out you can see what played uh every single summer and see some of those 
Yeah, those interesting double features like uh, Pinocchio and Escape to Witch Mountain. That's another good one right there. There's nothing better.